I was having a conversation today with somebody who's helping me with a book that I'm writing, and he wanted me to describe myself. And I said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> and he said, well, who, you know, you can't really teach people. Oh, well, you can, but I mean, you, sh you should be able to tell people why they should be doing something. And he's like, can you tell people why they should be fearless? You tell people why they should live to the best of their ability in a high vibration way. So, well, who do you say that you are? I mean, is that what you do? And, and how do you do that? Like, people want to know who you are. And I thought about that, and I kind of moved through a lot of the programming that started coming up around that because I started to think, well, I'm not important, and it's really not about me, and this is about the message and all that jazz, but that's a great question, and I wanted to just talk it out with you guys so that you guys know who I think I am. I think it's important because maybe it'll help you to figure out who you think you are. And when we identify who we are as we really are, that's when we start to get into the power position of our whole life. And it's okay to say we're powerful. Some of us were brought up like we can't say that about ourselves. We can't say we're pretty, we're beautiful, we're smart, we're intelligent, we're talented, because that was wrong, that was arrogant or something, right? But it's okay to embody and fully occupy your divine nature and your power. And so this is what I said to him. I said, well, I lead with what I've come out of because I think that that's what people can relate to me around. Like, I come out of major abuse, like sickening abuse, okay? I come out of radical suffering. And all of that trauma set me up for a certain life for a certain period of time. And for a period of time, and that would be my 20s and my 30s, really, I was reactive to that. I was living my life out, out of that as an expression of what I had endured through that abuse. And I was victimizing myself. I was victimizing other people. I lived in a victim orientation and also a very anxious and fearful orientation, very survivalistic kind of a mentality, super connected to, you know, do I have a house to live in? Do I have enough toilet paper? Do I have enough food? Like very fear oriented, very reactive really. And not mindful of what was going on beyond my own recorded loop. That's who I was. And while I don't live from that place now, I think it's important that I talk about that often because I've come out of it. And if I can endure the things that I've endured and seen the things that I've seen and victimized people to the degree that I have and victimized myself and been a victim and yet stand before you now and say that I am completely empowered, maybe not all day, every day, I'm human, of course. But if I can say to you that it's possible to move out of that space and into a space of fearlessness, of connectivity beyond anything that I would have thought possible when I was 7, 14, 25, then that means it's possible for you. So that's why it's important to include all those parts inside of me. But who am I right now? I'm a flawed person. I don't purport to have all the answers. In fact, the more I know, the less I know. And that's how it works. I'm a person who's in process and I teach from being in process. I think the most powerful teachers actually do that. As they're doing their work, they're also teaching about what they're learning and teaching people how they did it. I am in process. I am also in the work. And I think that the work never ends. I think we came here to do the work. As soon as you think you've cleared something, guess what? Here comes something else rolling down the pike that you're going to want to work through because this edifies and enriches and uplevels you. Without doing the work, we stagnate. We stay in the same place. We never change. We don't evolve. And I'm always working. And so are you, probably. I've made mistakes in the past, and I'll make mistakes in the future, but I don't stand in the energy of the things that I do wrong. And I don't let those things change me or my worth. Instead, I always seek to align back to 
the truth of who it is that I really am. The I am of who it is that I really am. So powerful as a consciousness. So full of love as a divine being. That's who I am. That's also why I can be fearless. I can really say to you, I don't give a crap about archons or reptilians or chakras that need to be removed or reinserted. I don't give a crap about shadow people. I don't give a crap about demons. I don't think about that. And if for some reason that entered into my experience, it would not be there for long because I occupy my dominion. That's the energy of knowing who it is that you are. It's not just head knowledge either. I know that I'm divine and that God created me and I'm here to intelligently design my life. That's head knowledge. To actually walk around in your dominion is something entirely different. It's walking around in the energy of being that. I know I am that and I am that. That's what keeps all that stuff at bay. I made a post yesterday about a preponderance of fearful posts in this space. And I think that's okay. And I think we can actually talk about this, but let's not get it misaligned, as my husband says. Let's not get it twisted. We are in the power position. And that's how we got to act. We do. We have to walk around the planet running the vibration of who it is that we really are. It's the key to everything. It's not just the key to not having to be worried about demons. We're not going there or shadow people. That's, it's not just that. It's the key to attracting everything that you want to experience in this life and attracting everything that you planned to experience in this life. The longer you occupy the energy of being that, the more these things come to you so very effortlessly. So who am I? I'm a human being. I'm almost 50. How dare you? How dare you? Almost 50. What is it? Is it April yet? No, it's March. In May, I turn 50. I've seen a lot. I've been through a lot. I have no doubt that I will be through, I will go through more in the future. But I'm going to go through all of that knowing exactly who it is that I am. And in those moments and in those seasons where I fall out of alignment with my divine nature and my own consciousness, I will have the skill set. Do you know what I'm saying? I'll have the skill set to get myself back into alignment because I know who it is that I am and I've experienced myself in that state. The more you do your spiritual work, the more you enlighten on your path the more you're able to pop into what I call the observer position, which is a higher vantage point. It's still attached or fixed to this incarnation, but you can occupy this energetic space where all you do is look at yourself and observe yourself. And it's from this space that you can make different choices for yourself. And you can say, you know, Crystal, you're getting a little cranky or Crystal, you're not seeing it the way that it actually is. And so get intentional. At almost 50, I finally learned the skill set of popping out of reaction and looking at things as they truly are so as to click back into alignment. Now, this power position of alignment, of dominion, may seem to some of you like an impossible state of being because you are still in your turmoil, your problems, your process. And it may seem like, well, how do you get there though? Like, how can I actually in, how can I actually feel that though? And you need to take the pressure off of yourself in thinking that this is some sort of an existential transformative experience that's supposed to take place. No, you can, you can do there. You can get there with baby steps by just moving in the direction of whatever it is that makes you happy, whatever it is that makes you smile, whatever it is that makes you feel connected to somebody or grateful for somebody, whatever it is that makes you feel connected to the earth, to Gaia, to your animals, what makes you feel love in your life, that's the doorway to high vibration, that's the doorway to creator energy itself, because God is love, that's why they say that. And when we put ourselves in connection to love in whatever form we can manage at ev in whatever season of our lives, that's how we begin to run high vibration energy. That's how we begin to align more closely and click into our divine nature. Do that more. Find more reasons to do that. 
There's a really beautiful passage in a book called A Course in Miracles that I haven't read in entirety. I've read like my whole bingo. I've read a little bit of it. But I went to see Neil Donald Walsh a few years ago. I always want to call him Neil Diamond Walsh. A few years ago, he wrote Conversations with God. And I didn't know what to expect because, I mean, I, was, I wasn't a huge fan of the book like everybody else. It was okay. But I went to hear him talk, and, and he spent the first half an hour just talking about all the mistakes that he made in his life. Like, I think he had been married five to seven times. I mean, even more than me, if you can believe that. <laughs> He's married a million times, and he was talking about all the mistakes he had made in his relationships. But it all came down to this one philosophy that ultimately guided his life no matter what age, no matter what mistakes, no matter what season of his life. And this comes from A Course in Miracles, and it is as follows. I have come into this room to bless this room. There is no other reason for me to be here. I have come into this home to bless this home. There is no other reason for me to be here. I have come into this relationship to bless this relationship. There is no other reason for me to be here. I love that. And ever since hearing that, I've tried in my spiritual practice to be the energy of that. I have come into this Starbucks to get my mocha, prepared to temp, I like it hot, 180. But mainly, I've come into this Starbucks to bless this Starbucks. Like, where is it? What do I gotta do? Where do I need to be? Where do I need to shine my life, my light? There is no other reason for me to be here. Or I have come into this life to bless this life and all that share it with me. There is no other reason to be here. That's who you are. That's why you're here. That's the power in you. You have the power right now to change the way somebody feels about themselves. You have the power right now to change the way you feel about yourself. That's real power. You know what isn't real power? Reptilians, demons, archons, greys, haunted houses. All those things that fascinated us maybe at some point. That's not where the good stuff is. It's not where the good stuff is. It's the capacity of a life. That's the good stuff. The capacity of your life, what does that mean? The potential of it, like all you can do with this life. If you want to know who I am, I would say to you, well, I try to boil it down to a goal. If I can, please God, don't let me clock out of this divine play until I have served at my highest potential changed as many people as I came here to change. Please, God, don't take me too early before I've done the work that I came here to do. And I choose every day not to focus in the direction of that which would cause fear or hatred or division or racism or abuse. I choose to pivot away from that and align instead to the light that lives all around us and that lives within me. That's who I am. Please, God. I had a late start. <laughs> it took me many, many decades to get here, and ain't that the truth for a lot of us. Some of us feel old. That's why I talk about my age a lot. It's not because I feel old. I don't, okay? It's not because I feel old. It's because it's never too late to start being powerful in your life. It's never too late to occupy your divine purpose. It's never too late to get fearless. You could be 50, 40, 60, 20, start right now. But start by understanding who you truly are. And so we could spend a lot of time in this space talking about all these things. But I'm just telling you, like, I like to talk about the higher things. I like to talk about, like, where the fruit is. I like to talk about where the miracles live. I like to talk about the capacity of a life. I like to talk about the transformation of a life. I started by talking about the retreat that we're having in August 
because in that space alone, people paradigm shifted out of that space. They, they came into that encounter feeling a certain way about themselves and understanding themselves in a certain way and left with their minds blown, understanding and accepting themselves on a whole new level. And you know who you are. You know who you are. And it changed their life from that moment on. That's the power. That's the power of the light. Life is too, sh is too short. Listen, I could let all the stuff that I saw in my youth drive me to this day, drive me around like a little car, like a little free radical, banging into things, damaging things, degrading things to this day and for the rest of my life. Some people do that. They let everything that came before, all the programming, all the abuse, all the problems, all the self-worth issues, drive them till the rest of their life. I could have done that, but at some point you got to make a choice. You do. Who do you say that you are? Somebody asked me that today, and I had to think about that. Of course, I am a combination of all these things, but at the end of the day, I'm empowered. I'm not scared. I'm full of love. I'm looking to be a blessing in my day. Not every day. Sometimes I yell at my husband. He deserves it. No, he doesn't. You'd have to meet him. If you come to the retreat, you will. He's perfection. Sometimes I'm crying. Of course. But who I am today is who I know myself to be. Who do you say that you are? If who you say that you are is less then what I just told you that you are, then we have some adjusting to do. That's okay. We have some realigning to do. You have to get to the place where you understand yourself as the creator of yourself. The creator of yourself. That's who you are. You created yourself and put yourself into this life to have this experience and you only have this life in this iteration one time. But you created that all for yourself. That's why you're in the power position. And if you don't know that yet, we got to get you there. That's where we got to get you. That's why I talk a lot about it. Am I a broken record? You're going to have to suffer it because more people need to know how powerful they truly are. More people need to know exactly who it is they truly are. Because when they start living from that space, ET, phone home, forget about it. We're changing the world. <laughs>